So our brains are made up of a number of different cell types, um, neurons being one of the ones that uh, is most important for getting information, processing information, and sending that information out to other cells. Neurons are the main cells that are affected with Alzheimer's disease. So if we were to look at a neuron from a patient that has Alzheimer's disease, uh, we would see two hallmarks. One of them is tau tangles, and the second one is beta amyloid peptide accumulation. So if we start with tau and its role in the cell, the neurons have proteins in them that maintain the structure of them. So those proteins are called microtubules, and they're kind of like the cell's scaffolding proteins, so keeping the structure of the cell. And tau helps those microtubules do their job. With someone that has Alzheimer's disease, tau can no longer do its job, and so those scaffolding proteins fall apart, and then the neuronal structure is no longer intact. So it'll kind of collapse, and then it can't function properly anymore. And those tau proteins clump together and form tangles inside of the cell. So that's the one hallmark. And then the other hallmark is the accumulation of these beta amyloid peptides outside of the neuron. And so those peptides come from a larger protein called amyloid precursor protein. And there's other enzymes that'll cut that protein into smaller pieces and release this small beta amyloid peptide outside the cell. And those peptides can be pretty sticky, so they'll clump together, forming these plaques. And if you have a lot of these plaques in between the neurons, they wouldn't be able to send information to other cells, and they wouldn't be able to receive any information either. So that would affect, uh, depending on the region of the brain that's affected. And in Alzheimer's disease patients, the hippocampus is one of the areas that's affected, and that is a memory center. So in that case, you would be altering someone's memory function. We examine how diet and exercise can alter these changes in the brain and trying to figure out exactly what the steps are in between and what we can do to reverse or prevent or slow the progression of the disease.